Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. I am Patrick. This is Storytelling Imperfectly, and welcome to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, I am Patrick. I hope you like what you see. We're going back into a missing hunters case. Your missing hunters fascinate me again. Generally speaking, hunters are well versed in the outdoors, they're armed, and most of them shouldn't be able to get lost in the woods. Although, it's not true, because that is a misnomer. Lots of people go missing, even hunters. And today, we talk about one su such case. So sit back, relax, it's story time, and let's see if we can't figure out what happened to Jeremy Childress. Jeremy Childress was a 31-year-old young man and uh, painted buildings for a living. Not any buildings, he was a commercial building painter, which means he painted high up in the air, which you got to kind of be fearless to do. One of his true passions in life when he wasn't working because it was a dangerous and stressful job was to go out fishing. And, and if he had a choice, Jeremy did exactly that. He was a fisherman first and foremost. However, his second love was hunting. And he was a devoted family man. However, he did like to go out in the wilderness. And his wife wasn't so much on going out with him. And of course, they had two young children. So, Jeremy often would either go out by himself or he would find a friend to go with. And on this occasion, back in 2004, in October, Jeremy had plans with his co-worker, who was around the same age he was, a man by the name of Shane Louie. Now, Shane was 35 years old and, and also painted these high-rise buildings. And so he and uh, Jeremy really struck up a kind of close friendship, not only through their work, but also for their love of the outdoors. On October the 16th, Jeremy uh, went hunting with Shane. Now, he told his wife that he wouldn't see her again until early in the week, like Monday. This was on a Friday that he left. He got up that morning, he kissed his wife goodbye, Jeremy uh, told his kids he loved them, he got in his vehicle and he went to work. Shane and he had a normal day at work, nothing out of the ordinary, and when they got off Friday evening, Shane and uh, Jeremy went back to Shane's house for a few minutes, they packed their gear that they would need, they got their firearms, and Shane decided to even bring Shane Jr., his young son, who was 13 years old at the time. So all three went out to the uh, Tillamook uh, Trask Unit of Oregon, which is somewhere between about uh, four miles from the Pacific Ocean and in between Tillamook and Beaver, Oregon. It was a remote area. Though it was heavily wooded and, and pretty dense uh, as far as the forest was concerned. And again, not being too far from the ocean and not heavily populate, populated gave this area a tremendous amount of wildlife. And this particular time, Jeremy and Shane and Shane Jr. were looking for elk and they had elk tags. Um, the first night they got there, they set up camp. Everything just went as normal. They went out hunting. They came back to camp. And it was getting late when suddenly it dawned on these guys. The one thing they didn't do when they set up camp and prepared to stay a few days out in the woods was to go and gather firewood. Now, this is a simple mistake. It could be made by anybody. But the, the three guys decided to get in Jeremy's truck and then go drive out to a place where they could find some firewood. It'd be faster. They could throw it in the back of the truck. And it just kind of made sense. So they did. They all piled in Jeremy's truck and they took off. Um, I don't know exactly the details. Everything I've looked into, there is nothing that really explains this part. But for some reason, they drove and drove and drove down logging roads and backwood uh, roads. You know, these single lane roads that if somebody came the other direction, you two were just going to stop. Looking for firewood. I, I really don't know why they would go for so far. I mean, you're in the woods. You would just, for me, leave camp, uh, walk into the woods, pick up some kindling, uh, come back, you know, or, or look if you had to walk a little distance from camp. But this is not what they did uh, for whatever reason. 
And after a few hours of driving, um, these guys st- suddenly realized, we don't know where we're at. And they were lost. And I mean really lost. Uh, I, I don't understand it. Again, if you're going down roads, you know, why, if you don't, if you don't know where you're at, I don't know why you would turn left and turn right. I don't know why it would dawn on you to not remember which way you came from. I, I don't understand. For me, that is super odd. Uh, that these men and uh, would be so well versed in uh, the outdoors would suddenly be confused enough or not aware enough to remember where you turned left or remember where you turned right. Uh, but this is exactly what happened. And so, uh, after driving for a few hours and realizing that they were super lost, they turned around, they tried to find their camp again, and they couldn't. Uh, 24 hours passes, guys. 24 hours passes. And these guys still haven't been able to find their, their camp and where they came from. And their vehicle, now Shane's truck, or uh, Jeremy's truck, is now running low on fuel. So they drive for a little bit further, and finally Jeremy says, You know what, man? I got a feeling that camp is just over that hill. We need to walk, okay? We'll find the camp. We'll, we'll stay, you know, we'll stay the night at the camp, we'll come back for the truck, but we need to get back to camp. It's getting late, they've been in the truck for 24 hours, and Shane recalled that Jeremy was just getting ultimately frustrated. And who wouldn't? I mean, I get frustrated if I don't know where I am, you know, inside of a city. If you've been driving for 24 hours out in the woods somewhere, I imagine frustration did build up in Jeremy. So, Shane Jr., Shane Sr., and Jeremy get out of his truck and then start heading across country to where Jeremy was almost 100% sure that his, their, their camp was. Um, after a few hours of walking, though, uh, apparent, from all reports, the weather shifted, and a dense fog and mist moved into this area. The temperature dropped, and it was getting dark again, and they still hadn't found their camp. So Shane Jr. told his dad, he says, Dad, I'm tired, I'm scared, I want to go back to the truck. And Shane Sr. told Jeremy, he says, Man, my boy is scared, he's tired, it's getting dark, we're going to go back to the truck, you need to come with us. And Jeremy wouldn't do it. He said, No, the camp is just over there. Look, you guys go back to the truck, I'm going to get to the camp. When I get to the camp and I find it, I'll come get you guys. All right. And the men said farewell to one another and parted ways. Now, again, in a lot of missing cases, guys, this is the what's called the point of separation. It happens over and over and over again. It happened in almost all of the missing person videos that I've covered on this channel. Is there's one single moment to where the person that goes missing gets out of the eyesight of their companions and they're gone. And this is where this happened with, uh, you know, unfortunately with Jeremy. The next day, uh, Shane Jr. and Shane Sr. Was act- were actually found by a logger who was back in the woods working uh, for a logging company. And when he found the two, uh, they, of course, they were distressed and said, thank God, you know, somebody came, somebody found us. And he guided them off this mountain back into civilization in which Shane Sr., immediately contacted law enforcement to let them know that Jeremy had gone missing. Uh, They called his wife and told her that your husband is missing. And this kicked off a huge search, guys. I mean, massive. Over the course of weeks, um, seven different agencies in Oregon sent people to look for Jeremy. They assumed that they would find him pretty rapidly. He was well-provisioned, again, being a hunter, He had a fully uh, loaded rifle. He was carrying a pack of cigarettes with him. You know, the smell of tobacco in a forest is pretty distinct because it doesn't smell like tobacco out there, you know? And if you've ever been walking down the street and past somebody who's smoking a cigarette, even if you didn't see them, you generally smell it. Um, He also had a pack of gum with him that he chewed gum because he couldn't smoke or it'd scare off the animals while he was hunting. Uh, they brought in canines almost immediately, and they could not pick up any discernible scent or trail for Jeremy. The law enforcement agencies, the sheriff's department in this area of Oregon, did reach out to people in the area, and they found one witness who said that they had heard 
uh, three gunshots in rapid succession. Uh, and that is the universal sign, guys. If you're in the in the woods and you're lost, if you're going to fire your rifle for help, do it three times in rapid succession. Other videos I had mentioned firing your rifle off to, to signal for help, and then there was a bunch of people in the comment section going, make sure you tell them to do it three times. If you're, if you're lost and you're a hunter or an outdoorsman and you have a firearm, fire it three times in rapid succession. Point it at the ground, not up in the air. Okay, there you go. All you guys that have been harping on me about giving, give good information. This could save somebody's life. There you go. That's for you guys. This witness said that he had heard three shots, although whether he was telling the truth or not, and maybe he was just making it up, I don't know, but this is what was said. Law enforcement looked in the area. They never found shell casings. They never found or heard any more gunshots or where it could have been coming from. So we don't know if that actually happened or not. Uh, again, uh, this massive search included over 300 people from seven agencies and not a single trace of Jeremy was found. They had helicopters flying over, the, uh, over treetops and no sign of Jeremy was ever found. However, Jeremy was, was right about his camp and where it was because where Shane and, and he and Shane Jr. had parted ways, that point of separation, it, it, if Jeremy went the way he was going, he had to cross a creek that was not very wide, but about four feet deep. And it was moving pretty good, but if he, if he did pass that, I mean, it wasn't very wide. So even if it swept him away, there's most, almost assuredly, he would have washed ashore or back on one side or the other because the creek itself was only about seven feet wide. But across that creek, if, he, if Jeremy would have gone the way he was going, he would have encountered and ran, ran back up on his, you know, his camp. So the idea that this guy uh, was heading in this direction, doing what he thought he could do, well provisioned, but no trace of him was found, is super strange. Um, ultimately, they did give up the search for Jeremy because there was no sign of him. I mean, they looked and they looked. And, and the great sadness of all these cases is that, you know, state agencies and local government agencies are only going to put so much money into finding somebody because they're allotted a certain number of funds a year anyway. And they can only rationalize spending so much money looking for one person and, and they did. I mean, they, they did what they could, but with no sign of Jeremy, they eventually gave up. Um, a few months later, uh, his wife actually managed to get another hundred people together, volunteers, and they went back up looking for Jeremy. The only thing found at this particular point in time was a wrapper from the gum, the brand of chewing gum that Jeremy uh, was carrying with him. Now, whether it came from Jeremy or not is up to anybody's guess, but considering how remote the area is and Jeremy being there, you would think that most likely it did come from him. But it still doesn't explain what happened to him because there was no other sign of him. And again, even if somebody dies in the wilderness, their rifle will not break down and go away. You know, a lot of times their clothing will still be there because it won't break down and go away. In fact, there's, you know, like in Aaron Hedges' story, I mean, they found all of his clothing. The, the idea is, is that Jeremy just disappeared, like so many other people have in this country, without a trace. And I have no clue of what could have happened to him, but ultimately his wife um, went to the courts and finally asked for a... Uh, death certificate, and it was granted. So as of today, remember this happened back in October of 2004, Jeremy Childress has been declared legally dead. He is deceased, uh, according to the, the government, and his wife and children are left without a husband and a father, and I can only imagine uh, how horrible uh, it must be not to have closure when you lose somebody like this in your family. I wish them nothing but the best. And I, I just, this case not only breaks my heart because of the, the tragedy of losing a family member like this, but it baffles me completely. 
how a person who is well versed in the woods, who goes out in the woods prepared, um, suddenly just vanishes. And I mean, and and what's really scary to me is how often this happens. The fact that I am not by any means, shape, or form running out of these cases and won't for a very long time even it saddens me, I think, even more than the idea of just a person disappearing does because that's bad enough. But the idea that it happens over and over and over and over again and has for such a long period of time that there's no short supply of missing person cases is ultimately the saddest thing. However, I would love to hear what you have to say and what you think might have happened to Jeremy Childress. Please leave me something in the comment section below. Um, if you're new to the channel, I hope you'll come back, subscribe, hit that uh, bell icon, guys, get the notifications. That way you don't miss out on the next video that I upload. And last but not least, guys, please, if you like this video, turn that little thumbs button blue for me. Show me a little love. I need all the help I can get. The channel's growing, but I can't do it without you. And more importantly, I don't want to do it without you. I need you. So keep coming back and hanging out with me. But that's it for Patrick today. I am out of here, and I will see you guys in the next video.